Welcome back, everybody. Today is the big day. Starfield finally hits early access, and I'm out of my mind excited for this game. And we're going to go over skill tree and the traits for your character. Don't worry, there's no spoilers here. There's no images. There's no videos that have to do with any of that stuff. I'm actually uh, going to be playing at the same time as you guys, but these are game mechanics. So if you'd like to have that be a surprise for you, uh, don't worry. I've got another video for you that has none of that stuff in there for you. It's called Starfield Gets Even Better. I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner. Deloop! If you want to go check that out. All right, so uh, real fast, if you're trying to get this today, like early access, you do need premium. Okay, so uh, if you have premium, you're good to go. But if you already have Game Pass and you'd like to upgrade it, it's $35. And then there's this version, Digital Premium Edition. If you'd like to get any of these products at all, it's in the lower left-hand corner. I've got your back there. It's from reputable vendors like GameStop or Newegg, stuff like that. So And, and it also helps support the channel. So if you're looking to do it, I would say grab it now and start that pre-download because, man, it's going to be a thing. It's definitely going to be a thing. And uh, just real quick, the time starts at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for me, 8.31, uh, 2023. All right, so there's a lot to cover here. And here's one of the major reasons why I want to put this out here is because there's going to be, like, so much time for us to burn before it actually starts. This will give you a chance to, like, look over and make those decisions. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I'll be playing this multiple times. But um, I'm kind of overwhelmed with those decisions in the beginning to be like, oh, what do I want to do? So I, I'm doing this in hopes that it'll help you break it down so when you are ready to play later on today, you'll be good to go. <sighs> okay, a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and hit the traits real fast. Um, we'll probably just hit it from here. Let me just back it up real quick. I might be taking... This is going to be a minute, dude. <laughs> this is going to take a while. So let me just kind of describe. We're going to go traits and then we're going to go through the skills. But uh, if you're looking for the backgrounds, I've already gone through all of those. But if you look at the bottom row here where you see... The, uh, the squares here, this is from your background. So these actually get locked in because of what you pick from your background. If you don't pick anything, you get file not found. Uh, with that being said, if you'd like to know all about the backgrounds, I've got a video on that. I'll go ahead and link that now in the upper right-hand corner. Okay, so we're going to hit the traits and then go to the skills. So traits are optional. And they are broken down into like separate pieces here. Like these are, you can only pick these two, or one, I'm sorry, one of these two, and then one of these two. And then I think you've got, um, is it down here? Yeah, this is faction. And then this would be like religion. So these three are faction and then these three are religion. All right, real quick, because we got a lot of skills to burn through, right? Woo. Spaced, your body has become acclimated to space. Health and oxygen are increased when in space, but decreased when on the surface. Incompatible with terra firma. Terra firma, you've, you've never acclimated to space. Health and oxygen are increased when on the surface, but decreased when you're in space. Incompatible with spaced. Extrovert, uh, you're a people person. Exerting yourself uses less oxygen when adventuring with human companions, but more when av adventuring alone. Incompatible with introvert. And then with the introvert skill, says you really need your alone time. Exerting yourself uses less oxygen when adventuring alone, but more when adventuring with other human companions. Interesting. Uh, alien DNA. Uh, you volunteered for a controversial experiment that combines alien and human DNA. As a result, you start and you start. I'm sorry. You start with increased health and oxygen, but heal and food. But healing and food items aren't as effective. I promise. We'll get better with the reading, right? <laughs> Jeez, I was so bad at the reading. Dream House. This one's interesting. This one kind of piques my interest a little bit. Just I kind of want to see what it's about. Uh, you own a luxurious, customized house on a peaceful planet. Unfortunately, it comes with a 125,000 credit mortgage with Gal Bank and has to be paid weekly. So you get a cool place to live, but I think it's like high. You've got debt, basically. Empath, you're deeply connected to the feelings of others. Performing actions your companions like uh, will, will result in temporary increase in combat effectiveness. But performing actions they don't like will have the precise opposite effect. Hero worship. We've all seen this from the video, which I think is pretty interesting, right? You've earned the attention of an annoying, adoring fan who will show up randomly and jabber at you incessantly. But uh, on the plus side, he'll join your ship's crew and give you gifts. And here's the opposite, I think, of Dream Home. Or this is a variation of Dream Home, I believe. So this would be another one. Again, all of these traits are optional. You don't have to do these, and you can do three of them total. Okay, kid stuff. Your parents are alive and well. You can visit them at their home. So again, another homestead. But you will automatically send 2% of your credits home to them every week. 
Taskmaster. Occasionally, if you have a crew trained in a certain ship system, that system will automatically repair itself to full health whenever damage below 50%. However, crew cost twice as much to hire. Uh, apparently, if you are going to hire them, there's no like salary. You just pay them one time. So apparently, this makes them more expensive. To, uh, buy twice. This one's interesting. Honestly, I think just like me personally throwing this in here, I believe the wanted is probably the best trait because you're going to get more XP and basically loot get, gets FedEx to you immediately. Let me read it. Wanted. Someone put a price on your head and the word has spread. Occasionally, armed mercenaries will show up and try to kill you. But concerned, uh, but being concerned gives you an edge. I'm sorry, cornered gives you an edge. When your health is low, you do extra damage. So you've got a damage buff, you've got XP that flies to you, and loot. I mean, that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. Uh, here are the factions that I can discern here. Um, you've gained, I'm sorry, Freestar Collect, Collective Settler. You gain access to the special Freestar Collective dialogue options and better rewards for some missions given by the faction, but crime bounty towards other factions is greatly increased. Incompatible with Neon Street Rat, United Colonies Native. Uh, the next faction piece here is Neon Street Rat. You grew up on the mean streets of Neon. You gain access to special dialogue options and better rewards from some missions on Neon. Crime, crime bounty by other factions is greatly increased. Incompatible with Freestar Collective Settler and United Colonies Native. I mean, obviously that makes sense. <sighs> Deep breath. Uh, United Colonies Native. You gain access to special United Colonies dialogue options and better rewards for some missions ga given by the faction. However, crime and bounty by other factions is greatly increased. Incompatible with Freestar Collective Settler and Neon Street Rat. So basically one of these three and then the religion is the same thing. Uh, we have Raised Enlightened. You grew up as a member of the Enlightened. You gain access to special chest full uh, of items from the House of the Enlightened in New Atlantis, but lose access to the Sanctum Universum chest, incompatible with the other religions. Uh, raised Universal. You grew up as a member of the Sanctum Universum. You gain access to the special chest full of items in the Sanctum Universum and the New Atlantis. So these two are both in New Atlantis, but you can only pick one. Uh, but you lose access to the House of Enlightened chest, incompatible with Raised Enlightened and Serpent's Embrace. Now, this one's interesting. I don't know if I'll pick this one uh, off the get-go. I'll be interested to see how people play this. Serpent's Embrace. You grew up worshipping the Great Serpent. Grav Jumping provides a temporary boost to health and oxygen, but health and oxygen are lowered if you do not continue jumping regularly. Like an addiction, incompatible with Raised Enlightened and uh, Raised Universal. So, those are your traits. That's all three. If we go back to the main page here, again, once you pick these, you have this slotted in here, and your background helps pick your base traits here. But I think it doesn't, like, lock you out or, like, put you down, like, a narrow path. Picking these skills happens as you level up, as far as I understand it. So we have five categories. We're going to go through all of them in each category. category. Green is physical. Yellow is social. Red is combat. Blue is science. And purple is tech. So let's go ahead and hit the physical. Deep breath. Unarmed attacks do 25% more damage and 25% less O2 when used um, when using a power attack. And then when you level it up whoop, to level 2, it's 50% more damage and 50% less O2. Next one up goes unarmed attacks do 75% more damage. That was a burp. I muted it. Some people are like, I can't stand it. I have a lot of tactical cylinders. What can I say? Uh, while in the fight and unarmed, running consumes 30% less O2. And topping it all the way out, unarmed attacks do 100% more damage and have a chance to knock down opponents. That's boxing. Fitness. You have 10% more oxygen available. And then the next tier is 20% more oxygen, 30%. Sprinting and power attacks now use significantly less oxygen, so that's very interesting. And then it goes back to zero. Now we have stealth. As a stealth meter, you are 25% more difficult to detect when sneaking. Suppressed weapons do additional and additional 5% sneak damage attack. And when it's upgraded, it's 50% more difficult and then 10% on the attack damage or sneak attack damage. And then level 3 is 75% uh, more difficult and 15% more sneak damage. And topped out, you are 100% more difficult to detect when sneaking. Suppressed weapons do an additional 20% sneak attack damage. Doors you interact with while in stealth no longer alert enemies. Ooh, girl. Weightlifting. Increase, yeah, I like this one. Increase total carrying capacity by 10 kilos. Then the level 2 is 25 kilos, 50 kilos, and then 
uh, level four is increase carrying capacity by 100 kilograms, gain 50% resistance to stagger. Nice. And then we have wellness, increase your maximum health by 10%. Then it goes to 20, 30%, 40%, and then that's the max there. Energy weapon uh, dissipation. Your energy weapon is reduced. I'm sorry, energy damage is reduced by 5%. And then the next one, I think, um, by the way, to get down to these next tiers, I think you need at least three skill points. And I think it kind of levels up. As far as I understand it, we'll have to kind of wait and see. So you can't just jump down to these bottom tiers. Uh, energy damage is reduced by 10%, and then 15%, and then at 4, 25% chance to reflect energy damage back to the attacker when your health is below 50%. I don't know about you, but I've been pining over these to like, you know what I mean? To like get uh, to pass the time and to figure out what I'm going to do. Environmental conditioning. Gain 10% resistance to airborne environmental damage. Gain 10% resistance to thermal damage. Uh, gain 10% resistance to corrosive and radiation environmental damage. And four, reduce chance to gain afflictions from environmental damage sources. Nice. Okay, on to the next piece, and that was environmental conditioning. This next one is gymnastics. Unlock the ability to combat slide. Ooh, next one is move faster in zero G. Oh, take 20% less fall damage. Become more stable while firing in zero G. Take 30% less fall damage. Replenish some O2 after mantling. And then level four is increase jump height. Run faster after combat sliding and or mantling. Hot. Nutrition is the next one. Food and drink are 10% more effective. Next tier is they're 20% more effective, then 30%, then 50% for the maximum. Pain tolerance, physical damage is reduced by 5%. Next one is 10, 15%, and then the top tier is 5% chance to ignore physical damage when your health is low. That's hot. So this next tier here, the purple layer, you're going to need seven skill points before you get down here, so you can kind of see how it levels up. This one was what, three? Yeah, three and then uh, seven down here, right? I think it's eight total because we have one up here, right? So this would be what? Um, I'm sorry, this wouldn't be three. Yes, it would. Three, and then you'd need seven down here because then you already have stuff. All right. We'll get there. So cellular regeneration. Slightly increased chance to recover from injuries naturally. Moderately increased chance to recover from injuries naturally. Moderately. Uh, noticeably increased chance to recover. And then 20% chance of not getting an injury when you are other when you otherwise would. Decontamination. Slightly increase the chance to recover from inflictions. Infections naturally. Sorry, I can't read. Moderately increase the chance. Then noticeably. And then 20% chance of not gaining uh, an infection when you otherwise would. And then martial arts. Hiya. We have 50% chance to crit. Ooh. With a melee or unarmed attack. Tier 2 is 15% chance to disarm an opponent with a melee or unarmed attack. And then level 3 is, while unarmed or wielding a melee weapon, take 10% less damage. And then topped out is, reflect 50% damage back when blocking a melee or un unarmed attack. Then we have concealment, which is at the bottom of the tree, which is 11 points, I think 12 total to get down here. You no longer set off enemy mines. Range sneak attacks do 2.5 uh, dam normal damage and your melee sneak attacks do four times normal damage and then level two is running while sneaking doesn't affect stealth ranged sneak attacks do three times normal damage and your melee sneak attacks do five normal damage then level three is you gain a chameleon like ability to c when completely still and sneaking range sneak attacks do 3.5 normal damage and your melee sneak attacks do eight normal damage and then topped out is engaging stealth causes distant enemies to lose you Range sneak attacks do 4x normal damage, and your melee sneak attacks do 10x normal damage. Whew! This is only the first tier, boys. My goodness. Neural strikes, 10% chance to stun an NPC with an unarmed attack. Attack, excuse me. Level 2 is unarmed attacks. Now do additional EM damage. Level 3 is 20% chance to stun an NPC while in unarmed attack. And four is, after stunning an enemy, you also knock down enemies within a close range. Ooh, we got like a knockdown AoE. Let me take a little swig here. Rejuvenation. Slowly regenerate health outside of combat. Level two is regenerate health more quickly outside of combat. Level three is regenerate health much faster outside of combat. You can now slowly regen health in combat. Ooh, and topped out is regening health even faster outside of combat, you can now regenerate health quickly while in combat. Ooh, that seems a little broken, right? Yeah. 
All right, so that's all of physical. Moving on to the next piece, social. Deep breath. Okay, we have commerce. Buy 5% less and sell for 10% more. Level 2 is 10% and then 15%. Level three is 15 and 20%, and then the top tier is 20%, and then you sell for 25. Gastronomy, you can craft specialty food drinks and research additional recipes at the research lab. Level two is you can research and craft gourmet food and drinks. Level three is you can research and craft food and craft food and drink delicacies. Ooh, I got a sneeze coming on, I can feel it. Crafting food and drinks occasionally doesn't use up resources. You can research and craft exotic recipes. Ooh, that's all topped up. Persuasion, 10% increased chance of success when persuading somebody. 20% increase at level 2, 30% at level 3, and 50% at level 4. Hang on. Oh, I almost had that sneeze. Whew, it was right there. If you hear me mute, you'll know why. Oh, I like this one a lot. Scavenging. There's a chance you'll find extra credits when searching containers. And then level 2 is, you'll. there's a chance you'll find extra ammo when searching. Level 3 is... There's a chance you'll find extra aid items like med packs, chems, or chems while searching containers. And level four is tracked resources will get highlighted when you're using a hand scanner. That's interesting. I wonder if they stack, right? Like from the previous one. <coughs> Theft, unlock the ability to pickpocket targets. Level two is a 10% greater chance to successfully pickpocket. Level three is a 30% chance. Ooh, that's pretty good. Level four is a 50% greater chance to successfully pickpocket. That sounds really good. You can uh, you can now pickpocket holstered weapons. That's tight. Deception. Ships 10% stronger will automatically surrender to piracy demands. Enemy contraband scans are 10% less effective. Level 2. Ships 20% stronger will automatically surrender. And then they're 20% less effective, the contraband scans. And then level 3 is 30% stronger. And then 30% less effective on the scans. And then 4 is 50% stronger. And then 50% less effective. Diplomacy. You can now force target NPC at or below your level to stop fighting for a while. You can now force target NPC up to 10 levels higher than you to stop fighting for a while. You can force a target NPC 20 levels higher to stop fighting for a while. And then four is you can force target NPCs to permanently stop fighting unless they're attacked again. Oh my goodness. So you can just de-aggro them. Is that right? Dump the aggro. Intimidation. You can force target NPC at or below your level to flee for a limited time. Level 2 is uh, you can force an NPC 10 levels higher than you to flee for a time. Level 3 is 20 levels higher than you. Level 4 is intimidate targets now flee substantial for a substantial amount of time. Isolation. Do 10% weapon damage and gain 15, 15 damage resistance for each spacesuit and helmet equipped when you do not have a companion or crew. Level two is you do 20% weapon damage and gain 30 damage resistance. Level three is 30% and then 45 damage resistance. And then four is 40% with 60 damage resistance for each spacesuit and helmet equipped when you don't have a companion or crew. Negotiation. You now have access to bribery and speech challenges. That's awesome. That's awesome. Reduces bribery cost by 25%. Level three by 50%. Level four, occasionally bribery won't cost any money. Ooh. Uh, instigation. You force NPC target at or below your level to attack allies for a limited time. Level 2 is uh, you can target 10 levels higher than you. 3 is 20 levels higher than you. 4 is uh, enemies affected by instigation will attack their allies until they are dead. <laughs> Leadership. Uh, companions gain affinity 25% faster. Boing, boing. At level 2, um, companions have 50% more health and 50 kilos more carrying capacity. <sighs> That's something to consider. Anything where you can put more stuff in a bag. I'm all about it. Companions will occasionally heal you when you get low health. And then level four, it doubles the bonuses of combat companions. And companions have a chance to pick themselves up after or from a down state. Outpost management. Ooh. Additional cargo links can be placed at outposts. I do like that. Level two, additional robots can be constructed at outposts. Uh, level three, additional crew can be assigned at outpost. And level four, outpost extractors produce twice as fast. Ooh, those are looking real good. Not going to lie. Manipulation. You force an NPC target at or below your level to obey commands for a limited time. Level two, you can get them 10 levels higher. At level three, 20 levels higher. And then four, manipulated targets now obey commands for a substantial amount of time. Ship control. 
uh, you can have up to four active crew members. Uh, level two is, uh, that was level one, ship control, now it's level two. You can now have five active crew members. Ooh, I like that. You can now have, level three is, you can now have six active, and then four is eight active crew members. Xeno, Scientology, Sociology. You can force a target alien creature up to 10 levels higher than you to stop fighting for a limited time. Level two is, you can force an alien creature 10 levels higher than you to stop fighting. Whoops, I'm sorry. Level two is you can force a target alien creature up to 10 levels higher than you to flee for a limited time. Level three is you can force target alien creature up to 10 levels higher than you to attack other allies for a limited time. And then four, you can force target creature up to 10 levels higher than you to obey commands for a limited time. Boom. Okay, so the next one, we've done social, or is it physical, social. Now we're gonna do combat. This one's very interesting. We're gonna have to make sure our video plays back in the background again. Let me take another sip here. Whew. And the reason why this one's locked here is because of our main pick. <sighs> Told you this one was big. Ballistic weapons do 10% more damage at level one. Level two, they do 20% more damage. Level three, 30%. And then at four, range is increased by 30%. So yeah, then all of a sudden at the fourth level, it's range, which is hot. <sighs> Dueling. Melee weapons do 25% more damage and take 10% less damage while wielding a melee weapon. At level 2, they do 20%. Uh, melee kills make you run 20% faster for 10 seconds. Is, these are interesting. Uh, dueling, uh, melee weapons do 50% more damage and take 15% less damage while wielding a melee weapon. And 4, melee kills heal you for 10% of your health. Laser weapons do 10% more damage. At level 2, they do 20, then 30%. And at level 4, laser weapons have a 5% chance to set a target on fire. <laughs> That's awesome. Pistol certification, level 1, 10% more damage. Level 2, 25%. Level 3, 50% more damage. And 4, pistol kills grant 25% critical hit chance for 5 seconds. My goodness. Shotgun cert. Shotguns do 10% more damage. Level 2, 20%. Level 3, 30%. And maxed out for shotgun kills grant a small chance to stun additional targets with. Uh, don't know what the rest of that is. Okay, great. Demolitions. Throwing your grenade now shows a trajectory arc. Explosions have a 25% larger radius. Level 2, explosives do 25% more damage. Level 3, reduce damage taken from explosives by 25%. Level 4, all previous bonuses are doubled. Oh my goodness. That one's crazy. <sighs> heavy weapon certifications. Heavy weapons do 10% more damage. Uh, at 2, they do 20% more damage. Level 3, 30%. And then 4, gain 25 physical resistance while aiming down sights with a heavy weapon. Incapacitation. EM weapons do 5% more damage. At level 2, they do 10% more damage. Level 3, they do 15% more damage. And four EM weapons have a 15% chance to do 300% EM damage. My goodness. So it puts a crit on top. Particle beams uh, do 10% more damage. And then at level two, they do 20. Level three, 30%. And four particle beam weapons now have a 5% crit chance. That's hot. Rifles do 10% more damage for rifle certification. At level 2, they do 20. Level 3, they do 30%. And level 4, reload rifles 30% fa faster while you are standing still. It's very hot. Marksmanship, increased critical hit chance with non-automatic ranged weapons. Level 2, increased critical hit chance with non-automatic ranged weapons by 8%. And then uh, increase, level 3 is increased critical hit chance with non-automatic ranged weapons by 15%. And... Four is critical hits using a non-automatic range weapon without a scope do double damage, and those with scopes knock down enemies on the next shot. Reload ballistic weapons. This is rapid reloading, 30% faster. At level two, reload energy and EM weapons, 30% faster. At level three, <coughs> reload particle beam weapons, <coughs> excuse me, 30% faster. 50% chance to avoid getting interrupted while reloading. And level four, uh, chance on hitting enemies to increase reload speed for all weapons by 50% for 15 seconds. And then we have sniper certification. Scoped weapons are steadier and have less sway. Level two, you can hold your breath longer with scoped weapons. Level three, headshots while aiming with a scoped weapon have a 25% critical hit chance. 
and level 4 scoped weapons do 50% more damage while using the scope. Targeting. Increased accuracy and range when shooting without aiming. Marks up to one enemy with 25 meters that takes that damages you. Level 2. Notab notably increase accuracy and range when shooting without aiming. Marks up to two enemies within 50 meters that damage you. Greatly increase accuracy and range when shooting without aiming. Marks up to three enemies within 75 meters that damage you. And at level 4, the maxed out part for combat is 10% chance to disarm targets hit when shooting without aiming. Marks up to four enemies with 100 meters that damage you. We're ripping through it, boys. Aye. Armor penetration. Attacks ignore 15% of targets' armor. Level 2, they do 30%. And then 3, increased critical hit chance with non-automatic range weapons by 15%. Uh, critical hits using non-automatic range weapons without a scope do double damage. And those with scopes knock down enemies on the next shot. Crippling. Human enemies have a 30% increased chance to enter a down state after taking enough damage. Uh, level 2, humanoid enemies have a 50% increased chance to not naturally recover from a down state. Level 4, human enemies now enter a down state earlier, and 4, previous ranks now apply to all enemy types. You now do 100% more damage to down enemies. And sharpshooting, increased, he uh, increased headshot critical damage by 50% with ranged weapons. Level 2, increased damage to enemy legs by 50%. Is this uh, VATS 2.0? What was that? It was uh, legs and then what? It was legs. Then 50% with ranged weapons. Level 3, increased all critical damage to enemies by 50% with ranged weapons. Level 4, ranged critical hit kills. Increase your critical hit chance with all ranged weapons by 25% for 20 seconds. Okay, that was combat. Let's do science, my favorite. Okay, deep breath. This is this one's big. Increase grab jump range of all jump drives by 15% at level one. Level two, reduce fuel cost of jump drives by 15%. Level three, increase grab jump range and reduce fuel cost of jump drives by 30%. Level four, reduce fuel cost of jump drives by 50%. Geology, get more common and uncommon inorganic resources from surface A's. Get, uh, get more rare inorganic resources from surface objects. Get more exotic inorganic resources from surface objects. And four, occasionally harvest additional rare resources from surface objects. Medicine, med packs, trauma packs, and emergency kits restore 10% additional health faster, or 10% faster. Level two. They do it at 20%, um, both for the restore and then 20% additional. And then level three is 30%. And then level four is med packs, trauma packs, and emergency kits restore 50% additional health, 50% faster, and have a chance to cure an affliction. Research methods. Resources gathered to craft items and complete research projects is reduced by 10%. Level 2 is reduced by 20%. Level 3 is reduced by 40%. And topped out, sudden developments during research are twice as common. Resource required to craft items and completely research projects is reduced by 60%. Hot. Surveying adds an optional zoom to the hand scanner and uh, scan distance is increased by 20 metries. Level 2 uh, adds another level of zoom to the hand scanner and the hand scanner is increased by distance is increased by 30 at level 3, it's increased by 40, and level 4, it's increased by 50 meters. Might be good if you're going to be an explorer, just saying. All right, hang on, let me make sure this is all good to go down here real fast. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 beep. Okay, we should be good. Right? Right. This one's going on for a minute, boys. <laughs> okay, um, botany. Get more common and uncommon organic resources from plants. Learn additional info about them from the scanner and allow some plants to be cultivated at your outpost. That's hot. And again, these different tiers, um, this would be your top tier, and then you need so many points for this. Looks like it's five. This one's seven, and then this one's 12. Level two, get more rare organic resources from plants and learn information about them more quickly using the scanner. Nice. Get more exotic organic resources from plants and learn more information about them more quickly using the scanner and occasionally harvest additional rare resources from plants and learn information about them more quickly using the scanner. 
Scanning. You detect uncommon or inorganic resources on planet and moon surfaces and more information about ships in space. Ooh, level two. You can detect rare inorganic resources on planet and moon surfaces and more specific information about ships in space. Level three. You can detect exotic inorganic resources on planet, moons, and surfaces and gain better combat information to ships in space. And you can detect unique inorganic resources on planets, moons, and then, ooh, uh, moon surfaces and gain a complete list of cargo on ships in space. Now that's hot. If you're going to be a pirate, it's pretty dope. Spacesuit design. You can craft, ooh, improved spacesuit helmets and pack mods and research additional mods at the research lab. Nice. Level two, you can research your craft and craft superior spacesuit helmet and pack mods. Uh, level three is you can research and craft cutting edge spacesuit helmet and pack mods. And four is construction of spacesuit helmets and pack mods occasionally does cost occasionally doesn't cost resources. Weapon engineering. You can craft improved mods at the weapon workbench and research additional weapon mods at the research lab. Level two, you can research and craft superior weapon mods. Ooh. Level three, you can research and craft cutting edge weapon mods. Level four, you can research and craft master level weapon mods. Now that's dope. I like that. Zoology, get more common organic resources from creatures and harvest from them without harming them. Learn additional information about them from the scanner. Allows you to produce animal resources at your outposts. Uh, level two, get more uncommon organic resources from creatures and learn information about them more quickly using the scanner. And level three, good thing I have water here, get more rare organic resources from creatures and learn information about them more quickly using the scanner. Did we just read that one? Occasionally harvest additional rare resources from creatures and learn information about them more quickly using the scanner. All right, on to the next tier, the purple tier, right? <coughs> Astrophysics? Astrophysics. You scan the moons of the current planet. You have a 10% chance to discover a trait Ooh, when scanning. You scan any planet or moon. In this system, you have a 20% chance to discover a trait when scanning. I wonder what that's all about, right? A trait, right? Is that like our traits that we start with? Level 3. You scan any moon or planet within 16 light years. You have a 30% chance to discover a trait when scanning. Ooh. Uh, you scan a planet or moon at level 4, and within 30 light years, you have a 50% 50, 50 chance to discover a trait when scanning. Chemistry. You can create improved chems and research additional chems at research lab. Level 2, you can research and create superior chems. Level 3, you can research and create cutting-edge chemicals. And 4, you crafting chems occasionally triples the amount created. My goodness. Outpost Engineering. You can construct improved outpost modules. Research additional modules at the research lab. Level 2. You can research and construct superior outpost modules. 3. You can research and construct cutting edge outpost modules. And then this one is outpost modules now cost 50% fewer resources to build. Bottom tier. Special projects. You can research experimental projects at the research lab. Level 2. You can craft rare manufactured components at the industrial workbench. You can craft exotic manufactured, com manufactured components at the industrial workbench. At level four, you can create unique manufactured components at the industrial workbench. Outpost extractors have a chance to produce additional resources. I do like that. Planet habitation. You can build outposts on planets with extreme temperatures, deep freeze, and inferno. Increase the maximum number of outposts you can build by four. Ooh, that's just level one. Level two, you can build outposts on planets with extreme pressure, increases the maximum number of outposts you can build by eight. Uh, three, you can build outposts, <coughs> excuse me, on planets with toxic or corrosive atmospheres, increase the maximum number of outposts you can build by 12. And planetary habitation four, you can build outposts on planets with extreme gravity, increase the number of maximum outposts you can build by 16. Hot. Attenuation fusion. Is that right? Atten attenutronic fusion? I think I said that right. Ship reactors produce one extra unit of power level, units of power. Level two, it does two extra units. Level three, three units. And level four, it produces five extra units of power. Hot. All right, so the last category should be tech. Whew, deep breath. We're almost there, right? My goodness, this is a big one. Ballistic weapon system, let me take another drink. 
Ballistic ship weapons have 10% increased damage and cost 20% less to use in targeting mode. Ballistic ship weapons have 20% increased damage and recharge 15% faster. And then level 3 is 30%, uh, both with increased damage and recharge. Level 4, ballistic ship weapons do 50% more damage to individual systems. Boost pack training. This is definitely one I want to start with. You can now utilize boost packs. Level 2, a boost pack pack, a, using a boost pack expends less fuel. A boost pack fuel regenerates more quickly. Four, doubles previous bonuses. Ooh. Piloting, you can now utilize ships with thrusters. Increase ship turning rate and maneuverability. <coughs> Unlock the ability to pilot Class B ships. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to mute that one. <laughs> class B ships, and then level four. Unlock the ability to pilot Class C ships. Nice. Security, you can attempt to hack advanced locks and two auto attempts can be banked. Level two, you can hack expert locks and three auto attempts can be banked. Rings, now turn blue when the pick can be slotted. Three, you can attempt to hack master level locks and four auto attempts can be banked. And level four, expend a digi lock to eliminate keys that aren't required to solve puzzles. Five auto attempts can be banked, my goodness. Targeting control systems. This one's cool too. If you want to be a bounty hunter, these are pretty hot. Unlock ship targeting functionality. Level 2. Time to lock onto enemy ships is reduced by 15%. Target locked ships fire at you slower. 25% slower. And then time to lock is reduced by 30%. You have a 10% increased chance of critically hitting a target locked ship. And 4%, time to lock onto enemy ships is reduced by 60%. Deal 20% increased system damage to targeting mode. I, I wonder how this is going to be like if you want to board a lot. Uh, energy weapons systems. Energy ship weapons have 10% increased damage and cost 15% less to use in targeting mode. And then level 2 is 20% and then 30%. Level 3 is 30% and 45%. And four, energy ship weapons recharge 30% faster. Engine systems, your, sh your ship's top speed is increased by 10%. Level two, ship's boost lasts longer and the cooldown is shorter. Ooh, level three, your ship's top speed is increased by 20%. And four, while boosting, all enemies disengage the player and can only reacquire them after a target after the player stops boosting. Interesting. Payloads, ship cargo holds have, ooh, I like this, have 10% more capacity. Level 2 at 20%, level 3 30%, and level 4 at 50% more capacity. Shield systems, your ship shields have 20% increased shield capacity. Level 2, they have 40%, level 3, they have 60%, and level 4, your shields will occasionally resist 100% of all damage received. My goodness, that's a good one. Missile missile weapon systems. Ship missiles ship missile weapons do 10% more damage and their targeting mode cost is reduced by 20%. Level 2 it's 20% and 40% reduction. Level 3 is a 30% more damage and then 60% reduction for the cost of targeting. And level 4 ship missiles have a 20% increased range, travel speed, and reload speed. Now we have particle beam weapon systems. Ship particle beam Ship particle beam weapons do 10% more damage, and targeting mode costs is reduced by 10%. Level 2 is a uh, particle beams increased by 20%, and then the reduction is 20%. Level 3 is 30% on all of those. And then level 4 is increased critical hit chance when ship particle beam with ship particle beam weapons. Robotics. You deal 10% more damage to robots. And turrets, you can force a target robot up to 10 levels higher than you to stop fighting for a limited time. Uh, you deal 20% more damage to robots, and you can force a targeted robot up to 10 levels higher than you for a limited time to flee for a limited time. Level 3, you deal 30% more damage to robots and turrets, and can force a target robot up to 10 levels higher than you to attack their allies. And level 4, you can force a target robot up to 10 levels higher than you to obey commands for a limited time. That's pretty hot. Starship design. Allows the installation of improved ship modules. Ooh. Allows the installation of superior. And level three allows the installation of cutting edge ship modules. And level four allows the installation of experimental ship modules. Starship engineering. All ship systems repair 10% faster. 
Level 2, ship systems have 25% increased damage mitigation. So, kind of like armor. 3, all ship systems repair 25% faster at level 3. Level 4, occasionally repairing one block of a system will repair the entire system. Hot. I like it. Kind of gives you a better idea of what's going on. Automated weapon systems. Automated ship weapons do 10% more damage and reduce all targeting mode costs by 20%. Level 2, automated ship Automated ship weapons do 20% more damage and reduce all targeting mode costs by 30%. Your ship takes 20% less damage while in targeting mode. And level 3, uh, automatic ship weapons do 30% more damage and reduce all targeting mode costs by 40%. Increase critical hit chance against target subsystems by 20%. And level 4 is ship turret system, I'm sorry, ship turret weapons recharge 40% faster and do 20% more damage to target subsystems. Boost Assault Training. Nearby enemies take damage when you boost and have a chance to catch on fire. Level 2. Chance to knock down nearby enemies when you boost. And 3. Fuel is still expended uh, Fuel is still expended until empty. Uh, while hovering, time slows down and the world moves 70% slower around you. That's time compression. That's one of the reasons why we don't have co-op. Just saying. EM weapon systems, EM ship weapons have a 10% increased damage and cost 15% less to use in target mode. Level 2, EM ship weapons have a 20% increased damage and cost 30% less to use in targeting mode. And level 3, EM ship weapons have a 30% increased damage and cost 45% less to use in targeting mode. And the final, EM ship weapons have a small chance to instantly, of instantly disabling enemy engines. And we're back to where we started, which is fa physical. So that's what we have so far. That is the traits and the skill tree. I know that was a big one. We'll have like chapters and stuff to break this all down. So hopefully this helps to pass the time and give you guys a better idea of what you want to do when the game does hit the ground running. And I, like I said, I am out of my mind excited for this. My goodness. And again, if you're looking for a, uh, a party when this is going to be fired off, we're going to be playing real time. Same as you guys. It's going to be fantastic. So be sure to stop by. Good good time to subscribe right now if you think you're into it and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the live stream or the next video love you bye